a quick video for the fellows uh, trying to explain um, how you would obtain the images for the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve in the treatment or assessment uh, and potentially treatment of a patient with myalgia parasthetica. All right, so the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve comes off of the uh, lumbar plexus here, as you can see, principally from L2, L3 spinal nerves, and they come together to form the lateral femoral cutaneous. And this is all within the psoas muscle. Um, eventually, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve leaves the psoas muscle, usually about the midpoint, okay, maybe a little bit above. This, it's it's uh, diagrammed differently depending on the uh, artist's uh, depiction, but you can see the lateral femoral cutaneous usually leaves the psoas from its lateral uh, aspect of the psoas muscle, usually around the mid-third or so, uh, and then travels on top of, obliquely on top of the iliacus muscle uh, towards the ASIS. Once it gets down here, it can uh, then travel deep or through the inguinal ligament, okay, uh, as it as it moves uh, out of the pelvis and into the thigh. Right. Another diagram showing the same thing. You can see here's the lateral femcutaneous. The psoas muscle has been removed on this side. You can see it over here, uh, traveling on top of the iliacus muscle within the outer wall of that pelvis, and then heads towards the ASIS and the inguinal ligament uh, is uh, is very closely approximated to the nerve, and the nerve usually travels deep to the inguinal ligament or through, uh, and then exits the pelvis into the thigh here, usually traveling on top of the sartorius for a short distance before intervene uh, before continuing distally between the sartorius and tensor fascia lata. And while it can be variable, here you can kind of see how that lateral femcutaneous nerve as it exits the pelvis spends a short amount of time on top of the sartorius muscle. This is the sartorius muscle. And then eventually continues distally between the sartorius and the tensor fascia lata or TFL muscle here. What's also interesting is that the lateral femcutaneous actually divides into three branches and you'll connect, you can actually see them um, demonstrated here. Here's the anterior branch right here, and then here is a posterior division which divides into an intermediate and posterior branch. And it's important to be able to identify all three branches on ultrasound because you might find isolated entrapment of one of the branches as opposed to the main trunk of the lateral femcutaneous. So I'll show that again here. And this is an anterior view showing those three branches. And if you look at the cutaneous innervation of a posterior view right here, you'll notice the lateral femcutaneous, the posterior branch, and to a lesser extent, the intermediate branch, will actually overlie the greater trochanter. So it may be that lateral femcutaneous nerve entrapment, specifically of the posterior division or the posterior branch, may actually be a potential pain generator for lateral hip pain that can masquerade as greater trochanteric pain syndrome. And that's why it's important to actually look at all three uh, if you're able to under ultrasound. Okay, what we'll do is we'll first to have the probe in a transverse axial orientation so you can get a short axis image of the ASIS. Note the hyperechoic bony contour of the ASIS with its posterior acoustic shadowing. Overlying this and to uh, traveling to the left in a relative long axis orientation is the inguinal ligament. From this position, as you do a short axis linear slide distally, you will note that from where the ASIS used to be will arise two muscles. Uh, on the left, which is more medial, or on the right, which is more uh, posterior lateral in this image. On the left side of the screen, which is more medial, is going to be a large muscle that's relatively triangular in cross-section, and that is the sartorius muscle. And to the right uh, is a muscle uh, that is a little bit more round and o oblong in shape, and that is going to be the tensor fascia lata. In between those two muscles, you will find the coalescence of the f fascia lata and the fascia iliaca. And in that crisscross transition zone between the two, you could look for a short axis image of a nerve, and that is going to be the main trunk of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. So here's a video clip kind of showing what it looks like as we're sliding from the ASIS down to the confluence between the fascia iliaca and the fascia lata where the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve lies. As you notice, as we slide distally, two muscles arise from the ASIS. 
namely on the left side of the screen you have the sartorius right there and on the right side of the screen the tfl or tensor fascia lata and in between you'll see that lateral femur cutaneous right there Moreover, as you slide more distal from that, you will find that the single lateral flame cutaneous nerve actually starts to split into three component branches, the anterior, intermediate, and posterior branch of the lateral flame cutaneous. And lastly, in this, in this final video clip, we demonstrate acquiring the image of the lateral femur cutaneous, sliding more distal from that, finding the three branches of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve right there, as you can see. And then finally, turning on that, rotating on, on the uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve to acquire an image of the nerve in long axis right here. All right, fellows, hopefully that helped out. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, keep working hard. Make the most use of your downtime to learn as much, study, get ready for the CEQ, etc. Uh, and um, hang in there.